Could a species survive getting nutrition only by smelling things? In Greek and Roman mythology, the Astomi, also known as the Gangians, are an ancient legendary race of people who had no need to eat or drink anything at all. They survived by smelling apples and flowers. Is something like this possible? I mean, we smell things by inhaling particles, and we judge what we should eat by smelling them. I.e. can a human-sized species get all the nutrients from the particles they smell? Yes. But you need an appropriate environment. Your human-sized species might make do with as little as 1,000 kcal per day if they had a fully human metabolism that would be in the neighborhood of 2,000 kcal, but you can posit a slower metabolism. So we're left with two requirements. Nutrients. And. Energy. Dot. Human food supplies both, but here we need some more flexibility. We can supply energy using suitable vapors. Gas and alcohol would supply more than enough energy, but that would mean living in a potentially detonating atmosphere. Not recommended. Heavier carbon chains are less reactive. So you could imagine a heavy fog of, essentially, heavy diesel fuel droplets. This could be produced by tree analogs with some equivalent of the fischer tropsch process, and dispersed in the atmosphere, either ubiquitously or in special feeding ponds. By inhalation, our creatures could easily fulfill their energy requirements, instead of compression, their lungs would simply absorb the fluid and distribute it in the blood, and the cells would oxidize it much like ours oxidize glucose. Efficient hygroscopic management and sufficiently humid atmosphere takes care of the drinking needs. Energy requirements having been taken care of. The quantity of required nutrients will go. Way. Down. Excepting the growing youngs, pregnant females and those healing from wounds, the adult specimens would need little to no extra mass. By making growth and healing lengthy processes, we can work around both problems. Our creatures would inhale somewhat more air than a human would, let's say around 20 cubic meters per day, a possible, if very high, concentration of dust in the air is 1 full gram per cubic meter, the human Koch limit is 10 milligrams per cubic meter for inhalable dust, but densities up to two orders of magnitude higher have been reported in dust storms and inside containers of specific substances such as flour, maize and sawdust. These densities aren't sustainable for long periods dust will precipitate and I can't seem to come up with a sensible mechanism to keep it aloft, but the young might romp in the sawdust, or maybe simply snort it. 20 grams of matter per day isn't very much, but that's only for those chemicals that can't be supplied in gaseous form. The ashes, so to speak. An average adult. Human. Being is about 3 kg ashes, and that quantity can be easily inhaled in a couple of years or as little as 5 months, if passive inhaling is all that it takes. Our people might be less reliant on heavy and uncommon elements and be thinner to boot, and only require maybe 1 to 2 kg of solids. Having the bones made of carbon compounds lignin, etc. would get rid of most of the calcium, which is the large majority in weight of human ashes, and carbon we can absorb from the atmospheric fuel. Of the main building blocks of organic matter, CHONPS, we can easily supply the first four through respiration and suitable chemical reactions. The relative quantities of phosphorus and sulfur are small, and both exist in gaseous form as phosphane, organophosphorus compounds, and hydrogen sulfide. We only need dust for the remainder. Of course, at this point the air your people breathe is not air anymore, it more closely resembles smoke from a tire deposit fire mixed with insecticides or nerve gas.